turn to Luke chapter 17. And we'll look at a scripture here. And then I'll, I'll, I'll read a scripture out of Leviticus, but Luke is where I want to come. I want to come to you this morning out of the gospel of Luke. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Verse 11 of Luke chapter 17. On the way to Jerusalem, and this was Jesus and his disciples, and they were journey, journeying, I can't get that out, so they were going to Jerusalem. He was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, because that was the way you went. That was the way you traveled from Galilee, from the location they were. You traveled on this road. And so can I just say right here that you may just be on your journey going from A to B, going from one place to another, and you don't think anything about it. But God always has a plan for your life. Are y'all hearing me today? Yeah. God's got a plan. You don't do anything unless God first ordains it. Yes. They, they weren't just going the quickest route, which that was. But they, God had a plan to use Jesus, and, and we're going to see it right here. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers. Now that's significant, and we're not going to talk a lot about that this morning. But that number 10 is very significant here. And they stood at a distance. And we're going to talk about the reason why they did. And they lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. They were cleansed. The reason he told them to go show themselves to the priest is because that's what you did if you wanted to verify that you no longer had leprosy. Okay? Jesus understanding that said, now just go. But I want you to see this. Before they ever left his presence, Sherry, they still had legacy. Mm -hmm. That's right. They still had it. Mm -hmm. But they did what he said, and as they were following in obedience to God, he healed them. Amen. Amen. And I believe God just wants to tell you this morning, you just need to be obedient. Uh -huh. Amen. You just need to be obedient. In Leviticus chapter 13, the leprous person, this is verse 45, the leprous person who has the disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head hang loose. And he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. And he shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. Now, in this day and time, we've talked about this before, and I've been in a leper colony, and I've, I've seen the effects of leprosy on people. And Katie's been there. She was there with me when we were there. And we saw what it did, does to people. And uh, some people, you can't really see it, but some people, it is very evident because they don't have a nose or an ear. They don't have, they miss fingers, they miss appendages, and that type of thing. But in, in spite of or in addition to maybe being disfigured, they wanted you to wear tore clothes. Mm 
Mm. Don't touch, they didn't want you to, they wanted you to look bad. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you, I, I could preach a while right here. Mm. They wanted you to look bad. Mm. They wanted you to appear like you had no hope. And in this day and time, you really did not have hope mm -hmm. that you could be healed. There were no antibiotics. There was nothing you can take. If you get leprosy now, you can take an antibiotic and you, you'll be normal. But not then. And the reason I'm preaching on this this morning is because Tuesday morning, probably about 3 o'clock in the morning, I heard the Holy Spirit speaking to me. He said, well, how does he do that? How, you, you crazy. How can God speak to you? Well, he's a spirit. And they that worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. And when I say I heard him, my spirit heard his spirit. Yeah. That's how he speaks to you. Yeah. He'll speak to you yeah. if you'll you're, if you're, if you're tune in to him. Yeah. And I heard him speaking to me. And he was saying these words, take the mask off. Take the mask off. Now before you go there, I'm not talking about your N95. I'm not talking about the mask that you've been wearing. I'm not talking about all that. Okay. I ain't going there. We ain't going to debate. We ain't not going to debate about the mask. That's not what I'm talking about this morning. And when he spoke to me in, his, in my spirit, I, he, he said, I'm not talking about those masks. But then he, he just said, take the mask off. And you know what I did? Uh, usually, if I, if I hear something like that in the spirit, I, I'll, I'll write it down. I get up and write it down. But I was too sorry and too lazy to get up and write it down. Now, what I have a lot of times when I do that, Ronnie, is I'll forget it. Right? Yep. Anybody ever had that happen? Yep. Oh, I should have wrote that down. So I just kept saying to myself, take the mask off. Take the mask off. When I got up that morning, when I was brushing my teeth and fixing my coffee, I was saying, take the mask off. So I didn't want to forget it. Because I knew God had a word for somebody today. Mm -hmm. God's got a word for You need to take the mask off so Jesus can see you. Mm. He wants to see you this morning. He wants to see your condition. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> you know what? He wants to see you smile. Mm. Yeah. He wants to hear you laugh. Mm. He wants to heal you. He wants you to take the mask off. He said, I covered the upper lip that walked around with their upper lip covered. It's hard to see what's going on. You can see my eyes, but you can't see my mind. God wants you to reveal so he can heal. He's got to see it. And this morning, he wants that. You see, when he said, go show yourself to the priest, you had to uncover. Wherever the disease was, you had to uncover where they could see it to prove so that you could come back into the camp. Some of y'all have, have been a Wearing your mask so long, you just out and away from everybody. You don't want to be around nobody, don't want to talk to nobody, you especially don't want to talk to anybody that says anything about faith. Because you've been there and done that. Come on, somebody. It's real, real talk today. Yes. You have been there, you've done it, you've tried it, you got hurt. You got disappointed. You got wore out. You just said, I've done it long enough. 
and I'm not going to do it anymore. I'll just cover up what's going on in my life. I'll just, I'll just cover this scar up on my head. I'll just cover it up on my leg. I'll just cover up what's in my ear. So you don't even have to see it anymore. Because I'm tired yes. and it ain't working. Yes. Come on. Right. And you have left the camp. God wants to heal your pain today. And all he wants you to do is to reveal so that he can heal. He wants you to get the mask off. I don't even want to use the phrase, you got to stop playing the game, because really, you ain't playing. And it's not a game to you. It's serious business. You have really been beat up. You have really been abused. You have really been scarred. This is not a joke. This is not a game. You're not playing. You're serious. But I want you to know that he's serious too. And he wants to heal you this morning. Now, as I was looking at this, I began to just study these masks. And I thought about the time of year it is. In Mobile and New Orleans and along the Gulf Coast. It's Mardi Gras. It's Carnival in other places. In Brazil, a lot of places in South America that celebrate Carnival. We call it Mardi Gras. And I, 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 I've never really paid attention to, you know, why, you know, the mask. I know everybody wearing them. It's like, didn't cross my mind the reason that they wore the mask. Now, you may know it. But I had to get on old Google and find out for myself. <laughs> and the New Orleans Carnival Association had an FAQ and they had a, a, a reason why they had the match. And, and this, I took it right off of their FAQ. That's a frequently asked question, by the way. The mask of Mardi Gras carried history as well. Carnival masks and Mardi Gras masks have their origins in ritual celebration and their tradition of disguise for the mingling of classes. The ability to engage in deviant behavior <laughs> without retribution and the representation of, of the celebration things. In other words, they made the mask look, you know, like Mardi Gras, right? But they said so that they could mingle the classes and involve themselves in a three-letter word that we call what? Sin. That's what they're doing. Now, I thought about that and I was thinking, so they're going to put this mask on and come party with me on the cross the track, the bad side of town, do all this kind of stuff. But now, after Mardi Gras, oh, we, they're going to go back and they, they see me on the street. They're going to turn their head the other way like they don't even know me. That's what, that's what people that in sin are doing. They get you down. They'll party with you. But boy, you wait till the light of day comes and look around. They turn their head and look up and say, I don't know you. Especially if you're in need. They get you down in the gut. But you, you, you try to get them to help you up out of the gut. They'll walk right by you. And I'm just saying, why do people do that? Why do you want to hang out with somebody and they ain't even going to talk to you the next day? I ain't never figured that out. So they use masks. To hide pain and hurt. They did in the Old Testament. And they used it to disguise so that they ain't going sin. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what it says. Isaiah 28 15 says, We have made a covenant with death and with hell. We have 
have an agreement. When the overwhelming whip passes through it, it will not come to us, for we have made lies, because it is a lie. See, a mask is a lie. It's a false front. It's not really what's real. Are you hearing me today? We have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. We got behind the mask because we like to do what we do. God wants you to take the mask off today. Because you put a mask on to rob somebody in the old western. <laughs> and even now, mm -hmm. you put a mask on, which is real easy to do nowadays. You can walk right into a bank with a mask on. Anybody ever think you'd see that? To <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so rob and to riot and to create anarchy. Mm -hmm. We see these groups. And their left wing and right wing groups, are, they're both sides. It ain't really nobody that you would really know. I, I want to say this again. We're more together than we are apart, except for these groups that are trying to pull us apart. Yes. Amen. But you'll see these people wear these masks. Mm -hmm. Why? Why, they, why don't they just go out? Because they don't want nobody to know who they are when they go back to work the next day. Masks can hide the pain. Masks can cause us to hide ourselves, we think, from life and all the responsibility that comes along with it. We can put a mask on. I believe God is saying today to take the mask off. Isaiah 53 3 said that the people who would witness Jesus as he was being crucified would hide their face from him. And we do that. We hide ourselves from the reality of the sacrifice that Jesus made to set us free from sin. Why do we do that? Because we feel guilty. Yes. Because we know what we did. And he's having to pay for it. Yes. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you something. You don't care. He's going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know why? He loves you. Mm -hmm. He cares for you. And you can try to hide and feel guilty, but he loves you. Yes. He'll die. He died for you. If you was the only one, he would die for you. Yes. And he did. Yes. And so... Those are some of the reasons for masks. But I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep saying this. He wants you to reveal so he can heal. He wants you to pull it apart. He wants you to take it down. Many people believe that masks can be forced on you by others to make you submit. Now again, I'm not getting into this argument about the masks that we wear. But let's just look at Muslim women wearing face covers. I tried to find why, where that came from. It's a Middle Eastern culture uh, custom. It, it, it predates it predates the Muslim re religion. But what you will, you won't find a good answer as to the real reason why. Some Muslim women just put a scarf on their head. Well, some Christian women do the same thing in the Middle East. That's a tradition. And you'll find some scripture that says that's the reason that they do that. Some, some put a veil over their face. But some are covered from head to toe. And all you can see is their eyes. And they're covered in black material. In the middle of a desert. I don't care what you tell me. Ain't nobody wants to do that. Now they'll say. It's because we want to reverence Allah. That we, we want to. We want to do that. But I believe if you just observe that. And you observe that culture. You'll find out. That it is a form of submission for the women. 
Not just what they wear, but how they walk and what they can do and what they can't do. People always talk about Christianity, Christianity. Christianity has done more to set women free than any other movement in the history of the world. If it wasn't for Christianity, ladies, I'm going to tell you, you would be like a lot of women out there in the Middle East. They would take the mule and put him in a barn and feed him and hook the women up to a plow and plow the women. Hmm. Are y'all here? They do it right now. So I don't know. It's got something to do with making them submit and making them feel like that they are not made in the image and the likeness of God. When you put a mask on, a lot of times you hide what God created. And what yeah. God created is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hide it. Yeah. He created us all in his image and likeness. Mm -hmm. And every person in here and on the face of the earth has beauty. Some of some, and they get mad because they say, well, it causes our men to sin. Well, it seems like the men's one with the problem. Yeah. Right. <laughs> People are putting masks on you because they got the problem. Mm.
He can see you smile. He can see you open your mouth and laugh. Yes, man. Because he wants you to have the joy that you are so desperately seeking yes. in all other avenues of life. Amen. God loves you and he cares for you. God has removed the man. Man, I'm telling you right now. The veil was in the in the tabernacle, in the tent, in the temple, was torn in two. That, and it took away the separation between God and man. But what God had removed off of our face, many of us have replaced because we were taught that God is too much for us. I've, been, I've seen it too many times. Somebody gets saved. And all they'll talk about is Jesus, 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 Jesus. And somebody will say, you, you, you tell him, calm down. I wish you would get fired. You tell him, simmer down. Because don't get too emotional. Don't get too radical. So we will put a veil on to hide what God has done for us. Yeah. Because other people can't handle it. Yeah. Because you know one reason why? This man is that remember when they got saved. Yeah. How on fire for God they was. Yeah. How full of God they was. And they feel bad now. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I, I'm not coming to make you feel bad. I want you to get the joy of the Lord again. I want you to remember what he did for you. I want you to remember how low you were and what he did to bring you out. Yeah. You said I never was laid up in an opium den. I was never laid in a crack house. I was never an alcoholic. But my friend, let me tell you this. Without God, you is a sinner because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And without him, you were going to die a death not intended for you. We all can worship him. Yes. And you know that feeling that you had when you first received Christ. Mm, that's right. God wants you to have it again. Yes. People have been trying to put your fire out ever since you got it started. Yes. Yes. And they'll put a mask on you. They'll put a veil on you. Because mm, yeah. they don't want to see you. Mm. 2 Corinthians 3.15 says this. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. Are you hearing me? They don't have a veil over their face, but he said the veil is over their hearts. <laughs> he said in verse 16 of 2 Corinthians 3, but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. <laughs> as long as we place that veil, we, if we put it back on, we can't truly grow yeah. into the image of Christ. Because in verse 17 it says, Now, and I quoted this earlier, the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, mm -hmm. beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Oh, glory to God. Amen. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. I'm going to say it again. Remove the veil. Take off the mask. He wants you to reveal so they can heal. He wants you to reveal so that you can receive his glory and be changed from who you are yes. into a greater glory. Yes. Because we're on a journey. <clears throat> and ain't none of us made it yet. Right. If you think you if you think you, you're there, uh, you you're about to have a rude awakening because you're going to do something that's going to reveal to you that you ain't there. Mm -hmm. But if you know you're not there, you will strive. To be in his presence and have his glory and be changed. I don't want to be the same man that I was this morning. 
when I woke up. By the end of the day, I want to be a different man. Yes. I don't want to be the same man that I was last week. I want to be a different man. I want to change. I want the glory of God to change me. And I'm going to tell you, just about the time uh, you think you're there, you'll realize it. So, so, uh, a friend of mine told me the other day, he said, a lot of things come with age. And it's wisdom and understanding. And I said, you're right. You're right. It does. And I'm going to tell you something. It's better, uh, it's better a lot of times to get taught knowledge rather than bought knowledge. Amen. You know why? Because I'm giving you taught knowledge today. But if you got to go out and buy this knowledge, it's going to cost you. I want you to stand this morning. If you don't mind. And I thank you all for standing. And I thank you all for being here today. I thank God that we've got some technology that covers the folks that can't be here. Amen. I thank God for all of that. And I thank God that His Spirit is the same where they are watching yeah. as it is here this morning. Yeah. And I praise His name. I want you to bow your head this morning, please. First of all, I, do, I want to ask you a couple of questions. I, you know, I say this all the time when I do this, and I, but I'm going to say it again this morning. We don't ever do this the same way every Sunday. We, we don't pray the same. We don't, we, we don't have an order of service, but we do have an order of service. We just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. He has an order. Yes. And so this morning, I want to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, I want to ask you, are you hiding in sin today? I'm just going to put it right out there. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to plead. I'm not going to beat you over the head. The Holy Spirit is the one that convicts and convinces. I don't. But if you're hiding in sin this morning, you need to reveal. And so I'm going to ask you, do you want to reveal this morning? Nobody's looking except me and God. I want to pray for you. If you want to say to, today to God, Lord, I, I, I need to uncover this with what I got. I don't mean you got to tell me or tell you got to tell him, but you got to admit it and say, Lord, take it away from me, and I repent of it. So is that anybody this morning? There's two hands. Anybody else? God sees another one. Anybody else? So I want to pray with you real quick, Father, in the name of Jesus. Those that lifted their hand, I pray right now that. Their, their hand is just an outward sign of what you're doing in their heart as they repent, which means they turn around and stop doing what they do. And I pray over each one, God, in the name of Jesus. The second thing I want to ask you, I want to ask you this. Are you having some pain that you need to let God see so that he can heal it? Is that you this morning? Or are you just hiding something from God? Everybody else knows it because you got a mask over it. And you think it's hiding it, but it's really not. And you fooled yourself. But this morning, God wants His truth to set you free. So is anybody here that needs a healing from God? There's a hidden pain. Anybody? God see you. Anybody? Yes, yes. God see you. Anybody? Else? Yes, God see you. Listen, some of you have been carrying this around for a long time. You've been wearing that mask so long. It's almost, uh, it, it's almost attached to your face. It's a part of you. Yeah. You've got used to carrying this mask and wearing this mask. But he wants to set you free from it. Yeah. I'm going to ask one more time. If you raised your hand, don't you raise it again. If you didn't raise it this morning, do you want God to set you free from it and heal you this morning? God sees it. God sees it. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who lifted their hand. They're being honest with themselves. And that's what you told them they needed to do. They are revealing it to you today. They're showing it to you, our high priest. They're showing it to you. Now, God, 
You do what you do. Because those men were obedient, you healed me. Because they lifted their hands and they acknowledged you, I believe you're healed. All of the broken heart. Give it, give it to Jesus this morning. Give it all to Jesus. Give it all to Jesus today. We used to sing that shattered dreams, wounded hearts, broken hearts. Give it all. Give it all to him this morning. Remove the mask. Reveal so he can heal. The third question I want to ask you, do you want to be transformed by the glory and the power of God? Religion has put a mask on you. Your flesh has put a mask on you. And God wants you to take it off. And we want you to unveil it today. We with unveiled faces will behold the glory of God so that he would change us degree by degree into his glory. Is that you today? Anybody? Anybody that say, I want to walk and dwell in the glory of God. I would hope that everybody would say yes to that. I want to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I always say that. And some people probably wonder, Lord, why I do it. Why I say it every time in the name of Jesus. It's because I can't... I, you're the one that's going to do it. Yes. It's your authority that's going to do it. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray that we would all remove the veil and look at you with unveiled faces, not fearing anything, but trusting in you. Yes. And that we would be changed from degree to degree to degree. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Say it.